Today we are checking out the stock high gain amps in the Hedrosh Prime. You may have seen uh, me playing around with the new Hedrosh Prime uh, modeling unit in our previous videos and um, I was um, creating a preset pack which I do for all my modeling units which I'm selling by the way with the best high gain tones ever so uh, yeah if you want to get my preset packs please contact me on Facebook by the way links in the description below and uh, in the video where I was introducing the preset pack uh, I basically said I think that I couldn't get any good results with the stock amp models here and also the stock caps but what this uh, unit can do and uh, there it is very impressive is it can clone amps and rigs like for example the camper or also the xfx to a degree and uh, i did that with my favorite rigs and i got really nice sounds and these are the sounds that ended up in the preset pack but of course you beautiful ladies asked me um if I could show the stock uh, amps and uh, IRs in comparison. So what you're hearing now is a uh, patch from my preset pack. Let me turn off the uh, stereo effect. So nice, uh, fat and tight gain tone. Also. Presets come with nice uh, delay settings. Also some effects. And of course a nice clean scene here. But uh, yeah check out my video about uh, my presets and uh, yeah, in comparison here we have a sound which I did with the stock 505 so let me show you the uh, the unit doesn't have a PC editor so uh, I'm trying to film it here and um, yeah as I said I'm using the stock 6505 model, which I'll show you in a second. Currently boosted with this green pedal, some kind of cheap screamer, I think. Without the boost, it sounds like this. Maybe we can turn off the uh, stereo doubler here. What I'm using for today's video is a uh, third-party AR, which I like. It's the Owen Hammer uh, 412 Mesa V30 plus H30 from the Heavy Hitters pack. I applied a high cut. Please keep that in mind. And also, I'm using my Magic Paramagic EQ, which uh, is here. But... Um, the reason for that is I, I really couldn't get uh, satisfying results with uh, the stock IRs and caps. But I think uh, I could get some nice results with the stock amps. I have to say, not as good as uh, the clones, at least for my case, but not bad at all. So, this is the 6505 and if you go to the amp block you can see it says revolver amp. 6505 crunch and if I go here to this section you see you can choose from head rush and usually you should choose could could also choose from revolver which is not the case now I don't know why exactly but anyway so let's start with the head rush amps here we also have a uh, PV 51 maybe 5150 crunch so <laughs> And immediately here, sounds way different. Uh, let's turn off this. Because somehow the bass disappeared here. So, let's turn off the, uh, or I turn off now the uh, overdrive block. Crank the pre-game, which is um, 
to gain control of this channel. Suddenly you have the bass. And I have to say... Turn off the delay. Usually this should be the, the volume. At least the real amp is the volume. The amp doesn't have a power amp control, but the pulse is, I think, what is going on from the preamp to the power amp. So it's more or less the volume control of this amp. But here it doesn't do that much, except adding gain at the higher uh, settings. A little bit floppy here. But as I said, if I reduce the gain here and use my uh, JRC OD. Maybe I should change the setting of uh, this thing here. Reduce the drive. Anyway, um, you could hear maybe it sounds okay, but very different from the revolver amp. So let's go back to this. Way less gain, also some other controls here. Also if I turn off the OD, you can see it's, it has way less gain than the other model. Also we have 655 plus. Also not bad, but um, I don't know if you could hear it in the video, but there was a huge volume drop, which is also not that nice. Anyway, uh, let's check out some others here. So uh, we have a 6505 lead channel. Lead channel should have enough gain, I think. It's not that terribly much, uh, much gain like the original has, but boosted it sounds okay. And also you have some presets here for uh, for these amps, but I'd rather like to dial them in by my by myself. Six five five plus. Okay, we have to create the post game here. Without a boost, I think it's not enough gain. Yeah, I found these amp models to have a little bit of... Well, not enough gain for my taste. 3120, you don't find that very often. That is an amp which I never played. But I own uh, three or four PB amps, the JSX, Triple X, and so 655, of course. And they all sound nice, so I assume that the 3120 sounds also nice. Has a little bit more presence frequencies here. Damping tight, mid. What else do we have? Tight, mid, loose. Oh, that's also nice. Changes the sound drastically. Gain. Okay. Nice. The lead channel of this thing. A 
with all any boosted so Sounds quite nice. Not that harsh. Almost like an American amp, like the Bogner or... I mean, uh, I think it is an American amp, but uh, some of the pre PVs, they're very harsh, so uh, they are more, well, uh, competing with the British Heiken amps, I think. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, again. Uh, masterpiece lead. Okay, it doesn't sound like a high gain amp. Many PV amps they have here, really. Hangar 18. What is that? To me, Hangar 18 should be a. Uh, 80s shred tone but here is it a bass amp maybe you can tell me please tell me if you know what this what kind of amp this is flat hill i don't know maybe let's check out the uh, later amps ah angle pb low lead my favorite channel of the powerball with a power ball is not the is a good idea because the end can sound very thin but I have to say the power ball is an amp which usually doesn't need a, a, a boost uh, in front of the amp it has a gate wow and they, they uh, uh, included the gate in the amp block because the real amp has a gate by the way, the gate is really effective in the real amp. Okay, but here the uh, the low lead channel doesn't have that much gain. The real amp it has tons of gain. I lead. I mean, that is something which I recognize. The amps could have a little bit more gain, in my opinion. I mean, the Powerball has tons of gain. Really, I, I own this amp and um, I rarely use the gain more than one o'clock. But here, as you can see, gain is maxed and it's not more than a crunch or classic rock tone. You boost it. Of course, you can boost it. Okay, but we're still uh, checking out the revolver amps. Oh, of course they have other PVs. <laughs> I think if you like PV amps like me, then I'll you'll be very happy with that unit. That sounds nice. Also boosted. Without the boost. Here you can hear how it sounds without my magic parametric EQ. Okay. And we have a Wolf King, which is I've never seen that amp being modeled, uh, but um, I tried that out yesterday and I think I made a patch with that. It's a Wolf King because I 
like it. Also for these um, singing leads, not for shred leads, but maybe for. Rock metal, or classic rock it sounds also nice. Yeah, so that is the Valve King, and um, as you can see, or as I showed you, lots of PV amps. But uh, we have another uh, kind of amps here. So we have the Head Rush original amps, I think. So let's check out a couple of these. Uh, where can we start? Maybe the Plexi. Plexi 50 Watt, one of my favorite Plexis. Boost it without the boost. Sounds nice. Uh, what else? Lead GS. So without the boost. Yeah, I can recognize the JCM 800 tone step. So it's maybe a modded version because if you crank the gain then you are in high gain territory. But usually the amp doesn't have doesn't have that much gain. So let's check out the model without the uh, without the TS. Ah. Sounds much more natural to me. Much more spanky, but uh, of course the boost of this. Yeah, you can see there are various Marshall models. I don't want to check them all now. Mesa 2 lead. Wow. That's a lot of distortion here. Okay, without the boost. Usually the Mark Amp series, they have a pre-gain tone stick so in this case you're boosting uh, the amp in the mid and treble but here it sounds a little bit as if they implemented the post-gain tone stick control well it sounds a little bit too uh, the uh, EQ 
EQ which I'm using here is not fitting quite well. So without the EQ it sounds a little bit better I think. Although I'd, I'd rather dial in the, uh, the V shape which you do usually with the Mark amps uh, with the 5 band graphic EQ. And uh, what is this? SR might be a Soldano. X range. Here we need the EQ. This amp sounds awesome, nice. Really fan around and without any uh, boost pedal. Nicely toned. Trap plate modern. Good old recto. <laughs> Rectal crunch with the huge amount of bass frequencies. And if we boost it, I have to say I can I can recognize the characteristics of of these amps, um, but uh, some of them are more uh, close to the original and some of them are less close to the original. I think with the PVs, the, especially the Revolver uh, company, they made a pretty good job. But um, yeah, here we have of course the PVs two. Check that out before I think. Also, I think close to the original, but um, in comparison to the other amp models here, uh, lacking, it's lacking bass frequencies, and this one has way too much gain. Because usually the original doesn't have that much gain, as other amps uh, like the Powerball don't have enough gain. So that is a little bit strange about this unit, I think. You would expect um, them to sound a little bit more like uh, maybe like the originals with some amps. Angle Powerball. Okay. Okay, it has gain, but I think the crunch channel of the PV had way more gain. As with the real amp, um, if I max the gain at the power ball, it wouldn't be usable. And they have the gate here, and they also included the gate. Nice. I think there are some decent models, especially the uh, the PVs. Um, the other amps, Soldano was nice. Uh, also, the Marshalls were nice. Um, I couldn't say that there was uh, an amp model which was really bad, but some felt awkward due to the lack of gain, I think. And uh, finally, I can show you something which I did with a stock IR. <laughs> I think here this one. I oh, know it's also the Mesa. Okay, 
okay, okay. It's everywhere. The Mesa, but uh, maybe we could check out one internal IR, uh, head rush. No, uh, drop towns. I like maybe the Bogner. There was only one which I. <laughs> wasn't that bad, so without the EQ... With the EQ... Yeah. But as I said, I couldn't get any decent results, so I was choosing my uh, own third-party IR. Uh, which is okay, I think. I mean, the unit is uh, capable of doing that and uh, you can use the stock amps, think you can get nice tones. But uh, yeah, if you really want to uh, get the full potential of this unit, you need, um, I think, the amp clones, especially the ones, of course, from my preset pack for high gains. And uh, yeah, that is also uh, the biggest selling point, in my uh, opinion, this unit, that it can uh, do this cloning thing very accurately. I think, uh, yeah, it's at least as good as the camper, in my opinion. Uh, the camper has maybe better effect qualities and also uh, camper is way more uh, mature. It doesn't have these bugs like this unit. But uh, yeah, maybe with upcoming firmware, they will improve this unit too. So yeah, that's it for me. I hope this helps you. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. See you.